The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Hamilton Square. We are so glad that you are here on this Palm Sunday. Uh, it's really exciting to see all of you. A uh, special word of welcome to you if you're with us for the first time or for one of your first times. We are, are especially glad that you are here. And if you could please do us a favor, in the pew rack in front of you, you'll find a welcome card. If you could fill that out, give us a little bit of contact information about yourself. We would love to follow up with you in the coming days and help you get connected with this wonderful church. It would be our pleasure to do that. Just a few other announcements. Um, you should have received one of these when you walked in, a palm. Today is Palm Sunday. And these look a little different than the palms you might be used to getting. I'm used to the ones that you could stab your sister with while you were in the pew, right? You, these still work for that. But um, these are, are from a company called Eco Palms. These are sustainably grown. These are fairly traded which means that the money that we spend on them stays in the communities, mostly in the southern part of Mexico and in Guatemala, to help the, the folks who gather those palms and package them here. The money stays there. It sends girls to school. It helps uh, women be employed so that they can contribute meaningfully to their families. And it helps build community centers. So we are changing lives, even though we are here in Hamilton worshiping with these palms. They look a touch different, but they are doing a lot of good. So we are excited to use them in our worship this morning. You'll also notice that our setup looks a little different. Uh, this is our Palm to Passion Sunday, and we will be listening to the entire Passion story over the course of this service. So um, we are excited for, for this service, and we hope that you'll be following along with us and entering in to this holy week. Uh, this is the holiest week of our church calendar, and we have a number of services throughout this week to help us get in to that space uh, for, for Easter, anticipating the joy of the resurrection. We'll have two services throughout this week. On Thursday, our Monday Thursday service at 7.30 on Thursday here in the sanctuary, and our Good Friday service on Friday, again at 7.30 here in the sanctuary. This service is going to feel a bit different from a regular Sunday, but those services also will feel a touch different, we'll, where we will be engaging with the arts in using light and darkness in order to draw us into a, a full experience of worship. And then on Easter Sunday, we are going to pull out all the stops and have two worship services, our 7 o'clock sunrise service over in our memorial garden across the way here. Uh, we'll be having our Easter celebration breakfast in Swayze Hall on the first floor at 8. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll be having our Easter worship featuring brass and choirs and the whole bit. So we do invite you to our Easter services next week. Now I invite you to take a moment and to open your hearts as we prepare to worship God. Throughout this service, we will hear scriptures telling of Jesus' journey from Palm Sunday to the cross. This is the story of that first Palm Sunday as told in Matthew 21. Hear the word of the Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The, the crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were all shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven." When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? 
the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I invite you to please stand and let's join our voices with the crowds in our call to worship. Rejoice greatly and shout aloud. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Hosanna in the highest, O Lord, we sing your praises this morning. We offer our worship to you and pray that you are with us in this hour as we remember, as we worship through your final week with us here on this earth. We pray this all in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Let's sing together. except for the kids, and I invite them to come and join me right over here. We're going to have a seat on the floor here. Yep. Gather around. Come on down. Yep. Great. Yep. Come on, Alice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a seat. Alice. Alice, come here. You're in the right place normal, but we got, we got lots of kids, lots of friends today, so we're going to have a seat over here. Yep, gather around. Okay. All right. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Yeah? Now, you got a special branch today, didn't you? Why do you think that is? Yeah? Why do you think? It's a palm. That's right. And, and why do you think we gave you a palm when you walked in today? Why do you think? It is Palm Sunday, yeah. Yeah, it's Palm Sunday. So we give everybody these to remind us about Palm Sunday. And in the story, what they did was, hi, come on down. What they did was, is the, there were folks in the crowds and they were so excited that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And you know how important people sometimes walk on red carpet? Well, they didn't, they didn't have red carpet but they did have palm branches. They had lots of those. And so they went into the trees, they climbed the trees, and they cut down the palm branches, and they put those on the ground for Jesus to walk on so that he wasn't on the muddy streets. And they were so excited. They said, oh my gosh, Jesus, the king, is here. We're so excited that our king is here. 
Well, I want to ask you another question. What is that over top of the piano on the wall? What is that? What is that? It's a cross. Why do you think that's on our wall over there? Why do you think that is? Why? It's show a sign of God. That's a great answer. Yeah. Well, we, are, we have that on our wall, and it is a sign of God. It's a sign of God's love for us. But when Jesus went to Jerusalem, that was on a Sunday, but the story doesn't end there. It keeps going, and eventually, Jesus ends up on a cross. It's a sad part of the story. It's a really sad story. He ends up there, and Jesus actually ends up dying on that. It's very sad. But next week, you have to come back and hear how the story ends. Because the story doesn't end there. It ends with Easter. Did you have a question? Yeah. Mm. Do you? Yeah, you do. You pro- some of you probably have one of those. Raise your hands if you have a cross at your house. Yeah? Do you have a cross at your house? How about all of you out there? Raise your hand if you have a... See, lots of us have crosses at our houses. And we have crosses at our houses because even though it's a sad part of the story, it shows us how much God loves us. Jesus was willing to go to that cross in order to save us. And so we celebrate, but we're also really sad. We kind of do those two things together. And that's what we're going to be listening for in our story today. We're going to be listening to that whole story. Jesus comes in. We're really excited. We're singing songs. We're waving our palms around. And then by the end, Jesus is going to end up on that cross. All right? Are you going to pay attention for that as we hear? All right. Very good. So you've been great listeners. So let's pray together. Can we do that? I'm going to pray some words. You pray after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the story of Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Help us to listen to the story to learn about your love. love. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all can head back to your families. Hear now the story of our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples, a Passover meal. From Matthew 26. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, 
After giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who is this person? whose entry into Jerusalem sparks an impromptu parade? Who is this person who is both hailed and derided as the true king of God's people? Who is this person who will later refuse to defend himself against trumped up charges of of blasphemy and treason? Who is this person who will die on a cross so that the world might live? Who is this? That's the question that seems to be on everyone's lips throughout the final week of Jesus' life. Some are going to call him a prophet. Some are going to call him a teacher. Others are going to hail him as a king. And as amazing and as lofty as those titles are, they still don't capture the fullness of who Jesus is. The the questions keep swirling around Jesus, and yet Jesus doesn't seem all that interested in answering those questions about who he really is, at least not in a direct way. He spends his final week talking in riddles, in parables. He curses fig trees. He cleanses temples. It's almost as if Jesus is telling us that we're not supposed to be listening for the answer, we're supposed to be watching for it. And then at the very end, when Jesus' sacrifice causes the sun to go dark and the earth to shake, finally one person, oddly enough, a Roman soldier, recognizes the full truth of who Jesus truly is. Jesus only beloved son. The long-awaited savior of humanity. The one that God had promised all those generations ago. Jesus is the true king of heaven and earth. And he's the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And it is this Jesus the one who lived the life that we could not live, the one who died the death that we should have died, it's this Jesus who pours out his life for us so that we might live forever with him. And he's the one who invites us to come to this table. It's at this table Jesus proves to us who he is once again. He's the God who comes to us, lives as one of us, gives his life for us so that at this table we might feast on his grace and drink deeply from his life so that we might be nourished by his love and made alive by his sacrifice. This table is the answer to that question, who is this Jesus? Jesus is the one who lives for us. Jesus is the one who died for us because of his love for us. Jesus is the one who was raised for us so that he might lead us into new and everlasting life with him. And Jesus is the one who is present with us right now in this bread and in this cup 
so that we might be filled with his amazing grace. Amen. I invite the elders to come forward. And just as the disciples did on the night of that Last Supper, let's pray. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He fulfilled the prophet's words and entered the city of Jerusalem where he was lifted high upon the cross that the whole world might be drawn to him. By his suffering and death, he defeated the power of death, becoming the source of eternal life. In him, the tree of defeat became the tree of victory. And where life was lost, life has been restored. And so remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us, and we celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And so lead us, O God, in the way of Christ. Strengthened by this meal, give us courage to take up our cross and in full reliance upon your grace to follow him. Help us to love you above all else and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, demonstrating our love for you in deed and word in the power of your spirit. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with all the redeemed, of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.
the body of Christ given for us. Let us eat, remember, and believe. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, we offer you thanks for this meal, for the table, and for the one who hosts us at this table, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are thankful for the love that you have shown us in him. Lord, we pray a blessing upon all those gathered here who have gathered around this table and upon your church all over the world. May we continue to do your work of love in the world. Lord, we pray a special prayer of blessing this evening for the least fortunate in our world, those who are in poverty, those who are in oppression, those who are incarcerated, those who are in addiction, for the many people that are in grief, who have lost a loved one, and we pray a special blessing upon uh, families of, of the children who lost their lives this week in gun violence, we pray your mercy upon that whole community and that whole situation. Lord, we offer this all to you, knowing that you are with us in all things. You are with us in the bright joy, in the sunshine. You are with us in the storms. We remember, of course, those in our own community who were affected by these storms in this region uh, from last night. Anybody who sustained damage or was injured, we pray a prayer for them. Teach us how to be the church in these and all situations so that the world may know of your love, shown not just in this table, but in the cross behind it and in the new life you give us. For we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Now the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. 
Jesus said to him, friend, do what you're here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hands on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a rebel? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite all of our musicians to come forward. And I want to invite all of you to follow along with this special music on the back page of your bulletin. What's interesting about this song is that this song is also answering that question, who is Jesus? And it says that Jesus is the God who has the whole scriptures have been about. And in particular, Jesus is the one who reveals the truth about who the God whose name is known in Scripture as Yahweh, Jesus reveals who that God is. That that is a God of love and mercy and grace. So I invite you to follow along and to consider how this story reveals who Jesus is.
Amen. Give everyone a moment to get back to their seats. Can we get one more amen? Uh, we, we have a lot of visitors today. Um, doesn't sound like that every Sunday morning, but so thankful uh, for youth, ages, you know, little ones all the way up into the 80s. Uh, what, a, what a cool way to celebrate the story, to hear uh, the gospel story uh, spoken in, in, a, in a language of music. Um, love it, love it. Thank you all. We continue uh, with our reading, again in Matthew 26. This is the story of Jesus' trial. Hear again the word of the Lord. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse. He swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of all the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. 
At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to the crowds, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to him, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and upon our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. 
They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you were the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The rebels who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. We have the opportunity to give of ourselves in the same way that Jesus gives himself for us. By giving our lives over to doing the work of Christ, showing the world his love and his grace. One of the ways that we do that is by giving of our financial resources. And so I invite you to give with generosity, remembering the gift that Jesus was to us as the ushers come forward. As they come forward, we'll be singing together beneath the cross of Jesus. final reading for this morning, but as Kyle mentioned earlier to the children, not the end of the story. From Matthew 27. 
From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran out and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split. Now when the centurion and those with him were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified. They said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who also was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. sing together of this terrible and wonderful cross.
invite you to come back next week to hear how the story ends, why this is a story not of tragedy and defeat, but a story of victory and life. And so as we go from this place and enter into this holy week, know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with us this day and always. Amen. Amen. Friends, go in God's peace.